Hey guys, or should I say, oh yeah, kids. <laughs> Welcome to the okiest guide ever. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. It's uh, another faction guide coming in. Welcome back to Max Plaint. We will talk about the big old green fungus people today, the orcs. Um, they are the only faction race however you want to call it in the 40k universe they are somewhat happy because they want only thing they want to do is smack and shoot and this is what they do um yeah there are a lot of uh, cool um lore about them so something for example if they think something should work or will work then it works so yeah just to give you a little example and heck did they got a lot of units now in unification so we will jump into the safe game right away and here we are on the safe game and before we talk about all these beautiful new units we will talk about the resources and unit caps the resources are more or less standard you have requisition you have power um, but what is interesting that you uh, you get your upgrades your power and requisition upgrades are also pretty standard what is special is that you get uh, your second listing post upgrade in tier 3, which is late. Normally you get your second uh, listing post upgrade in tier 2. That's just something to note at. In general, the uh, orcs are very wreck hungry because they have a lot of m models that will, will die. <laughs> so you need to reinforce them quite a bit. And all your tech, we will talk about the tech um, in a second, is very wreck. Uh, hungry as well um, there is there is a special orc resource we will talk about uh, when we talk about uh, unit cap here in a bit so and we will talk about unit cap you do not have uh, squad cap you have orc cap so every single orc you build let's look in the barracks costs you red resource the red resource is generated automatically and is more or less representing how much pop uh, you have three. This is now because of death mode not really representative but you start off with 15 orc population like 15 orc pop here and uh, so you have 15 red. If you then proceed to pay for orc resource you will only have 11 but uh, f 11 but have four out of 15 in a pop cap. So it's it's a bit over complicated uh, implemented what for what it is it is more or less uh, direct um, how should I say a direct correlation to your unit cap so don't think about it too much it is um, however prevents you if you have like you, you cannot produce squads before your pop cap has increased for all the other factions you can produce them and it says squad cap reached and it still will produce 100% when your squad cap gets uh, higher they will instantly be on the field not for orcs for orcs you need to have have the population cap um, before building units so it's like the other way around this is the impl uh, implication of that the other thing is that your orc pop cap your how much um, orc you, orcs you could field and um, i can show you show you real quick so every orc reinforcing a knob leader costs you orc um, uh, resources as you see here so using them will increase your pop cap and yeah uh, your pop cap how much pop you could field no not how much you can field uh, is also your tech of some sorts you have a uh, tier 2 is um, if you have 50 orc pop cap so this correlates to uh, uh, the um, war banners which give you orc pop to uh, four war banners the war banners we will talk when we talk about buildings but these give you uh, orc population cap and vehicle cap increases and the orc population cap is your tech there are a lot of research uh, researches buildings um, units that require a certain amount of orc population yeah that's that um, for the vehicles you have more or less your standard vehicle cap that goes from 0 to 20 you start off with 15 orc pop cap as i said and zero um, support cap vehicle cap you get up to 100 orc pep, uh, pop and up to 20 um, vehicle cap every orc banner gives you plus 10 orc pop and plus two vehicle uh, pop interestingly enough all your um, leaders provide you with a plus two uh, vehicle cap 
So this is um, interesting. That's um, normally the leaders only provide you with um, infantry cap. If you, for example, think about CSM or something. And the last thing I had, because I'm so uh, well prepared, I forgot to prepare it. Um, there are three buildings that increase your vehicle cap as well. It is a mech shop, the air tower and a bigger mech shop. And I will have to look up on my own overview I have made at some point. Give me a second. Here. It is the mech shop gives you plus two, the air tower also plus two and the bigger mech shop gives you plus four. So you, if you get some banners and the buildings out you will more or less have all your cap filled. If you get a few leaders, the leaders um, that give that are your Big Mac, the Weird Boy and the War Banner, uh, Warlord Gorguts in this particular because I have here War Gear enabled. Okay, and now we will talk about the buildings. Your HQ is your settlement. Um, your settlement produces as you would think uh, your builder your first capo unit and later on your hero units you have four hero units here and what was also added is the stick bombers we will talk about the units later of course and it can be upgraded to the orky fort which correlates to tier three for the orky fort you will need more than four orc banners however so you need not only the price you see here but even more because you need more um, war banners upgraded gives you more um, firing stuff. So that brings me to the next point. Almost every building of the Orcs has these little turrets here where Gretchen sit and shoot. Um, there are only a few exceptions and that are namely uh, generators and bigger generators and the air tower and probably also the bigger mech shop. Every other building has gunners. Uh, if you upgrade to the settlement you get two more uh, guys that shoot out. Um, unit production buildings you have four you have uh, the boys hut which is all your infantry the mech shop gives you all the various vehicles and um, the tech to tier four the air tower gives you various uh, flyer units so the orc air force is there and the bigger mech shop gives you titans and um, what are they called super heavies uh, to produce you have one research building which is the pile of guns gives you various uh, upgrades most of them have two tiers for example you have a Dakar research, more Dakar, and then even more Dakar, which increases all ranged fire, for example, or uh, choppy, and then even more choppy, heavy boy armor, and super heavy boy armor research. So you have tiered researches for almost all the stuff. Um, notably different is Blast here, uh, but we will talk about upgrades in the tech trees, I would say. So this is a research building, also uh, required for a lot of tech stuff, is it? And yeah. Your listing posts um, start off with a little Gretchen at the top, you will see here. This Gretchen will fire, but the damage is very, very minimal. Way less than, for example, the Gretchens that are on top of a Boysart. They have two barrels, for example. If you upgraded it once, it um, now becomes like a proper shooting <coughs> turret. And if you upgrade it at another time, it gets a rocket launcher. So this is tier three. Upgrade gives you a rocket launcher. No anti-infantry. Um, anymore it's more or less only anti-vehicle then um, your generators aren't very special um, they just produce power um, and then you have various defensive buildings your war banners are not only your tech are not only your how should I say they are also your turrets you could say they detect they um, can shoot and yeah, they are all of that. They can be upgraded so that the little Gretchen on the top gets a double uh, barreled uh, shooter and then gets a rocket launcher later on. So also getting some anti-vehicle um, possibilities. Then you have mines as you would um, have uh, almost every faction and more or less new. If you have the artillery option on, you get this orc artillery platform. And does it look really nice or doesn't it? Like two Gretchens and orcs here, uh, very high range. Um, like half the map here you could say or a third and mm, your, there is an AI artillery option which uh, allows it to fire automatically which sometimes works sometimes doesn't so if you build it you would need to manually target it most of the time so give it a hotkey and if something is in range fire at it um, as much as you can another thing about the buildings that most buildings can hide 
boys. So if you produce a boy, they, they can get in a settlement, they can get in a boy, so they can get in every building basically. Some have more space to fit in, like here can uh, fit in five. They cannot fit in the air tower and the, uh, the bigger mech shop. They can also not fit in generators and turrets, but in listening posts they fit in and in all the other buildings like the settlement and the boys that they can uh, go in. It's, it's not a tunnel uh, network like the uh, Imperial Guard has, for example, so it's only to save a squad and then if you prevail and uh, send the enemy back, they can get out and uh, be reinforced, for example. <coughs> so is this all about the buildings? Let me quickly check. Um, ah, yeah, because all your um, buildings have turrets on it, there's a tendency for Orc players to build their tech in form of these banners and like their um, future production buildings like on a listening post in the field, which protects this listening post because you have additional buildings, additional guys shooting at it, but it's very dangerous as well because you put your tech right in the firing line of the enemy if he uh, counterattacks. So it's a give or take risk reward scenario um, given that all orc buildings have really low HP compared to let's say space marines. Um, so it's risky, especially risky um, against necrons for example. I would highly discourage using this forward base scenario thingy against necrons because there is something called solar pulse and all your buildings that uh, should help you defend will not fire anymore so be careful okay and before we start of uh, talking about all this beautiful orc infantry there's one special thing about orc infantry it's the so-called orc mob bonus or the wow whatever you want to call it and therefore we will jump over quickly to a website uh, it's the dawn of war players guide where all the vanilla stuff is really explained in very uh, detailed manner and um, we will talk about the mob bonus there. And here we are on the website I saw to you. It's a donor for players guide. You can just Google this one and you will find this uh, really good website which has, <coughs> as I said, all the stuff in very detail for vanilla and as the org mob bonus is a vanilla um, thingy, we will talk about it here now. Um, the mob bonus is something um, that all Orc infantry can get. The mob bonus basically is a bonus, most of the time for a squad, but sometimes for multi squads in the area, if you get a certain mob value in the squad. Uh, there are various bonuses we will talk about uh, in a second, but uh, how is the mob uh, value calculated? Every singular mob um, or gives you one mob bonus you could say so four sluggers in a squad give you you have now a mob value in the squad for four most of them correlate to the orc pop they cost so a knob leader then gives you additional two um, mob bonus as well in the squad to so go from four to six there are only a few exceptions that are listed here or they are all here you see that all vanilla ones all basic um, guys, including the mega armored knobs, gives you only one. There you have knob leaders and knob squads units and uh, storm boy knob leaders. So all the knob leaders give you two. The big mech actually gives three, and the war boss gives you five. So there's an exception. I would assume that the uh, weird boy also gives you three, but I'm not sure about it. So what are the bonuses you, you can have, and what are they requiring? These are the bonuses you have. Um, we will just see that we cannot get the ad, ad on, on the screen if possible. <laughs> we have moral regeneration. You need a mob value of five in the squad. So a, for a slugger squad, you want to reinforce once or for a storm boy. So you at least want to have four um, units inside the squad. The entire squads get 7% morale regeneration for each squad member. This is explained here. So if you, it's, it's basically to the power. So if you have five units, it gives you, where's my calculator? It is not here, but um, if you, it's explained here, if you get like uh, eight models in the squad, it is uh, 1.718. So it's a morale regeneration increase of 71.8%. So it's really, really good because it's like exponentially. As more units get, the bonus get even higher. So you can think that every 
uh, <coughs> every orc in the squad provides this bonus to all other orcs and vice versa. All orcs except Gretchen's get this bonus. There's not much else. You only want to have a certain mob value in a squad, not in area. Now it gets really uh, sick morale damage immunity. It requires a mob value of 30 in a radius of 20, which is, uh, I think, a boulder has a range of 25 or something. So it's not very uh, small area. It's a quite an area and 30 mob value. So you want to have a lot of units inside a, diff a radius and then all the orcs become morale immune. It doesn't require anything just to have orcs around and it all orcs can get it except Gretchen's. Gretchen's are most of the time uh, excluded from this. You can also get maximum health. This um, needs a mob bonus of five in the squad and you need to have tier two and a pile of guns. So it's basically a tier two bonus. You don't get it in tier one and need to have a, a mob value in the squad of five and gives you plus two health for each squad member. So it's basically as you had morale regeneration, the, the seven uh, to the power of the number of squad units. Now you get um, 1.02 to the power of the squad units inside. And it's only given to the squad where, which is led by the Big Mac. So the Big Mac is really good for then later for melee squads because it gives them additional health. But it also gives is uh, additional, additional health regeneration. You need a, um, a mob bonus of five in the squad. Each valid unit type in the squad gets plus 12 health regeneration. Normally it would be like uh, 1.12 to the power, but it's bugged. It, lets, uh, it states here, it gives you pl um, plus 12% regeneration and that's it. It only is, uh, however, uh, applicable to the Slugger Boys and the Big Mac. Uh, we will see on a little table on later. Then you have also a movement seat bonus, which is similar to the maximum health, a tier uh, two bonus. You need to have uh, as all of these uh, five mob value in the squad, but also like 50 population, orc population and pile of guns, which is basically tier two. <coughs> the entire squad gets a plus 1.5% speed increase also to the power. And what is required units that confer this bonus are Slugger Boys, Nob Leaders, Storm Boys, Flash Kids, and the Big Mac. I think these health regeneration, as I read it here, uh, I take back what I said, this extra regeneration. The Slugger Boys get it naturally, but also any squad that uh, the Big Mac is attached to. So Sluggers are better than I would um, suggest that, uh, or, or imagine before. Yeah, but this maximum health and this health regeneration is why the Big Mac is so good again in, in melee uh, squads later on. Early on, I would put him on uh, shooters because he can teleport them around, for example. But you can, yeah, it is good in ranged and melee. And then we have also this uh, bonus damage in percent. Uh, we have this weird um, <laughs> at uh, all around the damage bonus. It's also a tier two bonus and all units in the, inside the squad gets two more damage, 2%, which is uh, also to the power. So the more orcs you have in the squad, the more damage the squad does. So this is kind of how it, uh, the opposite, as I said earlier, like or, or I will tell you in a second, that if you have, <coughs> you because of the orc population bone, um, how should I say, system, you don't get a benefit for having a lot of units in one squad. You normally want to have then multiple spots with lesser uh, with less models but this war bonus does the exact opposite if the more units you have in one squad the better it gets so it's like give or take and basically you you can can't have it both all orcs get this except scratching shooter boys and knobs probably because then shooter boys and knobs would be completely broken and here is uh, a good overview again um, where which unit gets what? Um, so you get uh, slugger boy. Basically, all units except mega armored knobs because they cannot reach the uh, mob bonus of five. Uh, get the morale regeneration, morale immunity, and other units can then get health regeneration, which is the slugger boy and the big mac. The maximum health also or only the big mac. Um, movement speed can get slugger boys, knob leaders. 
Okay. It, ah, das hier. Learns Confirmed Bonus Slugger Boys, Knob Leaders, Storm Boy Leaders and Flash Kids. And Big Mac, of course. So the Big Mac gives you all the different bonuses if you attach them to a squad. And Damage Bonus is also for almost all units. What bonuses are applicable to the new squads or what not, I do not know. But here you have almost all units listed up. So you don't need to have all the values in, in mind, but just have it in mind that you get bonuses uh, if you have more units inside of a squad. Um, and especially remember the bonuses of the Big Mac, which is health and health regeneration later on. Uh, health later on, health regeneration right away. So the Big Mac kind of also is a uh, apothecary inside, you could say. <laughs> okay, so this is the mob bonus explained. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment. But now we will continue with the, um, the overview of the buildings and units. The buildings we had already, now we will jump into the units. So now that you know how the mob bonus works, let's talk about the mobs themselves. Um, the first two units you have access to are A, your Slugger Boys. They can be built from your HQ and are your primary capping unit. They start off with four models, can get up to 15 plus a knob leader. Um, yeah, they are melee focused, but can do ranged fire as well. Don't uh, underestimate it, especially if you go um, uh, the more darker research or give them flamers, the burners. The burners aren't like super or should I say super effective, but can be uh, funny from time to time. And uh, as we have the first knob leader here, we will talk about him quickly. This knob leader does excellent damage in ranged and melee. So as ranged combat normally is uh, superior against uh, ranged uh, melee combat, you can see pros use uh, the squads which have a knob leader in ranged stance, for example. Uh, this changes if you have then the choppy upgrade, more choppy, it, which gives him a power claw. So then he becomes more, uh, or he becomes better in melee uh, by quite a bit because of this power claw. This knob leader is a generic knob leader which most uh, squads have access to. So this is your melee squad, then you have a range squad as well, it's a shooter boy squad, shooter boys have shooters as the name suggests also get the knob leader which is similar or the same entity you could say and they get access to uh, big shooters later on which gives them a bigger range and more firing uh, capabilities they have a little lower range than for example heavy bolter but higher range than the standard shooters they have <coughs> in tier one still you have access to two more squads one got added in the latest update it's the stick bombers they are more or less you could think um, in pricing and stuff like uh, slugger boys but they have stick bombs stick bombs and what is special about them is that you do not have one stick bomb for the squad you get one stick bomb for each squad member i think except for the knob leader we will see oh is the hotkey one two three four five six seven eight eight we have eight models plus the leader so eight and they all have individual cooldowns um sick bombs normally aren't like the greatest grenades but if you have a lot of them they can really make the difference i i really really like those the opening with them is hard because you need uh your barracks and your um pilo guns so opening with them right away is not as easy i have an uh, build order for it but it can be really funny what is also funny, if you're like bleeding models and don't have any stick bombers, you can reinforce them and the newly model gets a new stick bomb. So it's like a, a, like a little yo-yo. You use some models and you re, uh, reinforce them and can throw additional uh, stick bombs. So it's not the end of the world if you bleed some models. The other unit in tier 1, Storm you have the Storm Boys. The Storm Boys are your... Um, jump troops, also very mobby as you see here can get up to 15 you would normally not get 15 uh, the, the special uh, about the orc population is that you pay for every model so having more squads with lower models is advised because you can micro them better uh, a squad of 16 uh, storm boys will get half of them will not engage melee combat for example because they will uh, get like if here's the combat and they, those guys will not reach here so having more squads uh, with lower model numbers is more beneficial for orcs uh, even more so than for standard uh, factions 
um, also because you have the knob leader then twice. The knob leader here is still your standard knob leader but got a little rocket on its back but in terms of DPS and weapon choices he's still a standard knob leader. Then when you go more or less tier 2 you could say the mega armor knobs you don't uh, yeah is um, very late tier 2 but as they stand here we will talk about them quickly. They start off with one model can get up to four right really really expensive as you can see here. Um, can use this power surge which makes them faster normally they are really really slow as well are good in melee but also in range especially now that they can get some combi burners which I really like um, so they can be used in ranged as well. Your early tier 2 squads are two. The first your knob squad. The knob squad is like what every uh, player against orcs fears the most you could say if you're early tier 2 and then comes the knobs. Especially if you have, um, we didn't talk about the leaders, sorry I will talk about the leaders in a second but there's the mech boy which can teleport in with your troops. Um, having a knob squad teleported in your face or in your base is a pain. They are really really strong, really really durable. Look at these uh, health values given that it's like with two health upgrades but even with one health upgrade they are really really tanky and even pack a punch in melee so if you have a prolonged melee brawl these guys are what you want to have <coughs> they got new weapons in the big chopper which is excellent against infantry and demons not so good against buildings and they have the power claw the power claw is really really powerful not just because of the name uh, but has a setup time so in like chasing units they will most of the time not hit so use this with caution, uh, their standard loadout is really really good uh, as well. And then we have here the tank buster squad. The tank busters are your anti-vehicle squad, also uh, available right when you hit tier 2. They get a research where they can infiltrate, so we have infiltrated anti-vehicle capabilities which is always really really nice. And they have got a leader in the last update which not only gives them like the, the leader boy itself, which has a rocket launcher, not, not a shooter as you can see here, but he also gives them a stick bomb. I forgot about the storm boys start with a stick bomb uh, right away they can jump and if you research they can this turbo boost which makes them like absurdly fast now that we uh, talk here. But back to the tank busters, tank busters can be infiltrated and newly they can also get the tank hammer. The tank hammer um, makes them a melee only unit if you give them to a model the model cannot fire in range so it's uh, do you want to do it do you do not want to do it um, I would say maybe not their base weapon here the base melee weapon you could say if the, when they use this rocket in melee <coughs> they do also additional damage against vehicles already this uh, tank hammer uh, for, I would suggest ups this uh, damage against vehicles even more so you can an infiltrated melee squad against vehicles and maybe even against uh, it says all times uh, uh, types of vehicles but I would suggest that it's also good against buildings so you could have a melee infiltrated squad that uh, base traits or something uh, normally I wouldn't do it because uh, they are in range they have really good range so uh, giving them into melee is not advised for the most part they can sometimes used in melee if the enemy does not have detections to screw up the firing of the enemy for example Okay, these are your tier 2 and then you have also uh, various tier 3 units. We start with the vanilla one which is the flash kits. The flash kits can do one thing and that they do really well. It's shooting. They can shoot and they can shoot even more and even more. They, Yeah, that's what they do. They are good against infantry and heavy infantry, not really good against vehicles and anything with higher armor ratings. But they are really good at what they do. They shoot real good, <laughs> you could say. The other two uh, units in tier 3 are for example your looters. Looters are your devastator kind of unit but really late in the tech tree but have um, really awesome weapon options. They start off with this uh, more or less heavy bulldog kind of equivalent but uh, can get uh, different uh, weapons. They all require to have a big mech on the field so you cannot use them without a big mech. And then you need also some researches, so like, uh, which is also very special. You need like more Bernie and Blast here, then you can use everything, I think. Yes. <clears throat> so they started with this, I don't know, big shooter thingy. But they can get also a custom big burner, they can get a custom big shooter, a Ducker shooter, and a custom Mega Blaster. The Mega Blaster is the latest in the tiers. 
All these others are more or less tier one. Yes, and these are tier four. They are available in tier three, so it's not that big of a jump, you could say. And then you have this special mechanic uh, ability that is produced or protected by the spanner, the leader. The leader also has this very awesome looking uh, weapon here. And we will read through it real quick because I forgot it. Ah yeah, you, it uses to um, nearby ally vehicles upon all vehicles nearby. He occasionally able to fix broken parts. Mm, speed boost. So it, it boosts uh, vehicles around. You can ah, oh, you can use it on. Uh, really quickly. Look at it. You can target ally vehicles to give them a speed boost and maybe even heal them. Last but not least, we have the commandos. The commandos is an infiltrated squad, limited to one. Really good for what they are right away. They are slow when infiltrated. It states, but they are quite a fast. But they get faster if they get spotted. It states. And yeah, they are infiltrated, get a really good, uh, <coughs> sorry, commando snob leaders, which is really nice. Has, yeah, okay, has a shooter and a power claw, which is uh, more or less standard. And they can get really good weapons. The burners is not your standard burners, it's really good big shooter and rocket launcher. Most guys go for rocket launchers, as I do as well, to have a, let's say, better, you could think of a better tank buster squad for late game. Uh, they're infiltrated by default, no research needed. You can get stick bombs and tank buster bombs, which is uh, more or less melter bombs you can think of. Does massive damage against vehicles and buildings, so you have uh, this kind of um, melter bomb. The special weapons you can use to uh, fight various units. The burner would probably be good against demons, the ducker against any infantry, and the. Uh, the, the big shooter, mine, I mean, and the rocket launcher against vehicles and buildings. So very versatile in what they <coughs> can achieve. Okay, now that we uh, we forgot about the uh, leaders and builders, we quickly talk about them now. You have the Gretchen's, which is your builder squad. Start off with one only one model, and then can be reinforced for free. So you want to reinforce them as ASAP, basically. They can build, they can repair, they can get infiltrated really early on in the game. So you have infiltrated repair units which is quite a pain to deal with if you later on deal against deal with uh, orc vehicles that get constantly repaired and you cannot detect the repair unit so you will shout at the screen more than once <laughs> i guess other than that you have this assortment of leaders here the first one is your big mech here the big mech is really nice the big mech uh, can teleport has really good ranged and melee capabilities has really good Accuracy on the move, so do not just track him in melee, he packs a punch in range as well. Can be attached to give the various mob bonuses we have uh, talked earlier. Uh, can repair uh, the jump, as I said, it will let the uh, squad that he's attached to teleport as well. And later on, he gets the tank supper ability, which uh, stuns in an AoE. So you can target a unit, but it is an AoE stun and gives them damage, range damage reduction. Uh, aura around him, which is really basically everything orc want is a range damage reduction aura So give, get it as soon as you can. It's really pricey, but it's really good So later in the tiers you can get um, these are all tier 3 you can get the warlord the warlord itself is a really powerful combat unit um, More so if you have like hero walk and everything and gives him all this various war gear here What the war gear does we will talk in the tech trees he has the power of the war ability, which basically gives them uh, morale, immunity, and damage bonus around him. So really, really nice. Uh, the Mad Dog is a, is a secondary commander, which can be attached to squads. Um, gives them healing rate, I think. Yeah, increased healing, and can get give fight him juice, which is a target ability. It's not you click it and it's done for the squad, which makes the uh, um, squad not die. But it's not like. Um, Invulnerability we had for for example with Imperial Guard. It's more like if they, they survive with one HP So it's really, really situational best used uh, Is it for the healing he provides he also has this a uh, burner bomb, which is basically a uh, <coughs> Big old nuke costs you some power and will go off in a few seconds doing massive damage around the 600 HP can get killed um, relatively easily if the enemy focuses and last but not least, or not last, but second to last, we have the Weird Boy. Weird Boy is really 
a uh, really nice commander can be attached as well has a really nice attack with his uh, stuff here and has all these various abilities that i have to read through this teleport i think is also we will uh, check this real quick can you please come over here the teleport i think is also getting the squad with him and then he has uh, passive ability um increases the rate of attack of nearby in infantry squads so it's an uh, attack uh, basically a damage uh, boost you could say and then he has all this uh, active abilities you have the raw of morg um, causes fire damage to all units in front of the caster with injury suffering the most additionally it spreads havoc and fear so it's basically a aoe attack uh, so it's like a ah like a little uh, like the uh, the, the uh, uh, Chaos dudes do. Then you have the Fist of Gorg. Strengthens all infantry around the castle, increases their, their hit harder and gaining armor penetration. So this is damage and damage resistance. Then you have the Crunch. Targets a small area and yeah, it's like the, the foot of Gorg or something. Yeah, I would say. And then you have Maniac Kill Zizer, which is in toggle ability if you click it uh, he gets in this uh, weird state where he just juggles around doing some weird stuff um, which uh, give me a second reduces armor of foes around him affect all infantry demon and commander units suffer damage from enemy attacks and deal less damage so this is best used if you are in a melee brawl or he is in a melee brawl you can use this toggle ability to debuff the enemy and buff your own troops so he is a very good support unit in that sense and you see here a little thing i noticed as well if he gets attached to squad his teleport uh, cooldown resets so we will see in a second if he does teleport the units around or not this caesar ability can only be used if he's not attached as you can see here as well but all the other units uh, 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 stuff you can hear like the raw of Mog, or, but uh, especially the fist of Gorg is really really nice to buff your squad so we see will they come with them yes so this is exactly like the um, Big Mac also works yeah last but not least we have this flyboy here which is nothing special this is just a guy that can be attached to a squad <coughs> but uh, how you get them is really special there's a flyer unit that can use kamikaze um, basically ramming their um, um, aircraft in the enemy and then this flyboy will get out with half hp and you can keep him alive he will fight for you not really a good fighter or something but uh, having additional unit around is really fun i would say this is the leader units now we will talk about the vehicles we sh shall not forget the demonic unit uh, later on but these are your wide uh, assortment wide range you could say of vehicles um, the early vehicles are on the front the later vehicles you can get on the back getting in tier 2 and building the mech shop you have uh, two units available you have the war truck the war truck itself is really fast and has a big shooter at the front or two training big shooter um, which deals really good anti-infantry uh, damage and can uh, bring your squads around and can if uh, use a turbo boost as well which just moves let's uh, move uh, around and uh, you can research uh, more or less passive uh, boost that makes it uh, as fast as you can see here the same boost is provided to the war track war truck war track don't get it mixed up the war track starts with two missile launchers so it's an anti-vehicle and the building unit but can change the weapons to a bomb chugger making it a um, yeah, mid-range artillery unit against infantry or a twin linked big shooter which makes it to a anti-infantry unit it also can use the turbo boost one note if you played vanilla there was more or less a bug which got uh, like to the standard you could say that if you got the bomb chugger it would be an additional weapon and not replace the existing missile launchers this uh, the code suggested that this is a bug so it uh, got changed in a way but the bomb chucker got buffed a bit so it does not is a let's say a downgrade most people would consider it why would i get a bomb chucker if i have missiles before it's a choice now a real cut cut and dry choice if you want artillery or missiles you don't get both but as i said the bomb chucker got buffed to compensate for that 
to make it still a viable choice. If you build some more banners, you can later on then build a killer can. The killer can is more or less your walker melee unit, has a little uh, shooter here as well, but can get a rocket launcher later on, making it a anti-vehicle stuff as well. Um, it's rather slow, but what is special about it is the armor class. It's not vehicle medium like most walkers are, it's vehicle high, so it's really, really hard to kill which is basically what it's uh, for. It goes in, it tanks, and all your other guys, boys, sorry, shoot and smack and kill. Um, exactly, there you have it, it has it then rockets later on. And now we will start to talk about later units. One unit that is not <coughs> as super late is the Death Dread. The Death Dread is like more or less a real Dreadnought equivalent, has uh, all these uh, shooty bits and hacking bits, can get a Scorchers, which is, I guess, more or less uh, flamers, and then you have to get custom mega blasters. These mega blasters, I'm not sure what they're really good against. Heavy infantry light vehicles, also effective against the commanders. So it's, it's more or less sounds like from the damage damage spread, <coughs> like an anti everything thing, like a, for example, a auto cannon. So really nice, limited to one really nice uh, walker. Um, one really good unit you have access in tier 3, I'm not sure, tier 3 or tier 4 is the gun wagon. The gun wagon is an artillery unit, very long range, um, shoots squigs I think, let's see, yeah there it goes, the squigs, the squigs is more or less homing so the squigs can, uh, it says right, doesn't it? So standard artillery files inaccurate, those creatures improve their ac own accuracy mid-air so it have a little tracking um, you could say pro projectile in them, so they're really good um, artillery, limited to two, I think. And then you can get looted tanks. It's a random, you can see in the building. Here you don't know what you get. One of those two you get either a looted Lehman Russ or a looted Predator. They have a little health differentiate, I think then it would also have a little um, difference in a damage but they still have the same weaponry you could say this is more or less an artillery weapon um, so you can see it has artillery fire but can change to a zap gun which is extremely effective against vehicles and greater demons there you have it so that's your tier 4 and then we start with relic units and super heavies your relic unit more or less is your stomper. The stomper itself can uh, use all this really nice weaponry. This one weapon has a chance to stun. Stun, I think it's like uh, turning gravity off, so they are floating, whatever the description is. Has some artillery fire with this belly gun, and which is uh, what is not shown here, but um, we will get, um, for example, Gretchen over here. He can uh, get inside it. And then. Uh, get out whenever they want. This is true for all in Orc infantry that can get into the Stomper. There are m multiple vehicles they can get into. Um, also really nice unit, I think the Battle Wagon is also a Relic unit, is this Battle Wagon. If you have seen Dawn of Two, it's similar but not the same. It has also this Rampage ability here. Um, let's use it here. <coughs> it uses its front mounted thingy to mow down uh, units but the Dawn of War one engine isn't like the best for that. It has a right assortment of like big shooter ducker thingies but all of them can be uh, changed to uh, rocket launchers to make it from an anti uh, anti um, infantry weapon to an anti um, vehicle tank you could say. Mm. I think I think. No, this was another unit. It also can hold uh, squads, um, but yeah, it does not get any benefits from units inside, and other than one unit we will talk about later. Then you have your super heavies. There are three different. It's the kill burster, the kill blaster, and the kill crusher, all doing things according to the weapons. This is like a demolisher cannon. This is also a artillery kind of a weapon here. And then you have this um, the big anti-infantry weaponry. So they all do what they, their weapons are best to do. They um, have a shared cap of one, however. 
Mm, and really late unit, it's almost a, a titan, you could say, it's the battle fortress here. Look at all the weapons inside. Um, uh, and all the weapons on it, is, it looks more or less like a bane plate, if you, are <coughs> if you ask me. Super heavy assault tank. Um, can carry up to four orc swords that can operate the vehicle side big shooters. Even Gretchen's can carry. So if you have it around, put Gretchen's inside and they will shoot uh, the side sponsors. It's more or less like a camera, you could say. Really, really nice unit. Look at the 10k health, so it's a relic unit, if not even more. Before we talk about the Titans, we have two more vehicles. It's the Gorkonaut and it's the Morkonaut. So you have to decide which you want to go for. If you build one unit, you cannot get the other one. Even if the one dies, you have to rebuild the Gorkonaut. The Gorkonaut is yeah your line breaker unit can also hold uh, in units so it, if it breaks in then knob squads can for example pour out and reach havoc really uh, strong but also has some missiles on the top really strong unit more or less melee focused and then you have the uh, morkanaut we have to switch um does more or less the same thing has but some uh orky maniac thingy here at the side and can use a supercharged force field like this is a theme you will see uh, be used uh, multiple times to the bigger walkers and then it will um, the force field thing makes the can super tough to range damage there you see it it's a very limited amount of time and costs a lot of power so use it with caution if you lack the resources for it. And last but not least we have the two uh, titans. We have the Gargant which uh, also can carry in units like the Stomper, can has a spelly gun and whatnot, can use the uh, all beloved juggernaut ability to get out of melee combat once. He has also the supercharged force field which also costs you power and can poop mines if you move it. Make it a little faster real quick. And then you poop mines. There's a uh, old disabled button here. I will report it. But yeah, then you have here mines. I'm not sure how <coughs> viable it is. It's really cheap, so you may or may not use it. And then you have the big, the great gargant. Look at this guy. It's basically a gargant on, I don't know, steroids. He's even bigger. Also has the belly uh, gun and whatnot. And I think can also get units inside. Yes, he can can use the Juggernaut and Supercharged Schwartz Field as well. Cannot poop mines however, but has really big weapons and really good range as well. Before we talk about vehicles, I will stop by this Quickout, which is also a relic unit you can choose. You can either uh, face uh, either build the Stumper or the Squeakout. The Squeakout can also hold in units inside, is a demon by armor type and can also like this um, Rampage where it um, moves on and chucks units inside away. One special thing about it is that it can be repaired because probably there's this thingy on the top or whatever. So keep in mind that this squig can be repaired for whatever reason Relic decided to. Okay, and last but not least, we will talk about the Orc Air Force. Only one of these units were before, this was the fighter bomber, but we have now. Um, various tier 2 uh, flyers and two more tier 3. The first one you can get are the Death Copters, for example. The Death Copter is a flying squad unit dealing massive amounts of damage against infantry and morale. Um, not really good against commanders or like tougher infantry, it only states infantry. Generally, very, very high DPS, very mobile, but as all flying squads. With more than one model, you can see they get uh, stuck on a regular basis. Even though there is, for most maps, a anti-stuck feature, they will find a way to get stuck, I assure you. Um, they are really expensive and reinforcing. You can see re very power expensive, very power expensive to get on the field, long build time. So they are strong but expensive and do die really, really fast. So you even can trade more or less uh, equally against them if you have anti uh, strong or anti uh, um, infantry weapons because they have so less uh, health. Um, yeah, that's 
that's them. And then we get the Ducker Jet. Ducker Jet is also in tier 2 and this is the one where the uh, Flyboy comes from. The Ducker Jet is really good against infantry and aircraft. It also says vehicle but I'm not really sure how good these vehicles are. Come on, can you please make your loud noises somewhere else. Um, they can fight for as long as they want and then they can use the kamikaze against other aircrafts. It cannot target um, ground units. You need to use it against aircraft and then if if you use it and this thing dies, this does quite a lot of damage as well. So it's a last ditch effort <coughs> to kill another aircraft. Then the flyboy will get out and uh, can fight for you. Last but not least in tier 2 I think as well available is the Vaz Boom Blaster Jet which is a basically a mech boy in a jet. It shares a cap with the mech boy so you can either field this jet or the mech boy. It can teleport which is awesome for an aircraft so it's even more mobile and also gets these passive range damage resistance aura from the uh, custom gadgets research from your Big Mac. So really nice to have this synergy. And then in tier 3 you get your fighter bomber which you probably also already know from vanilla is a uh, an flying artillery against, against infantry and now you get also the burner bomber which is gives you this um, bombing run ability which is really nice against infantry as well so you have to decide they share a cap, shared cap of two Oof. all right this should just give it a quick look should be all the units around we talked about the demon as well talked about all the infantry so now we will jump into the tech tree where I tell you about um, the different tier strengths and all the upgrades and war gear you can get. Ha! Sorry, and not the tech trees or yet we will talk about some PvE only units. This is a campaign save you see here. And um, there are some more or less special <coughs> campaign only units. And one of the most special units is the Mega Armored Knobs, which is in the campaign not a squad but a singular um, mecha armored knob which you can attach to a squad because why not really nice to have it uh, attachable i think in vanilla it was not uh, attachable and was just one knob that would die at some point and then you couldn't replace it um, all of these are the special rhymes there are also some other um, uh, honor guards in the campaign that are not different from their main from a base unit, so I will not talk about them. The Medoc here is more or less a standard Medoc, but cannot use a uh, this nuke very early on. It's probably so you cannot move to the enemy base, place a nuke, and win. Then you have the heavy slugger boys. There are special thing about them that they do not need uh, anything to get the burners. I think the burners you can get more or less uh, right away. Then you have the heavy shooter boys here, which cannot get heavy shooters because they already have them. So they have heavy shooters from the get go, but do not cost more to reinforce. So really nice to have them as well. Then you have these uh, heavy storm boys. Why do I have them put in here? I'm not really sure. They are more or less standard, like your standard ones. Not sure why I put them here. The heavy tank busters did not got their squad leader. I'm not sure if it's uh, on purpose or if it's an oversight, but you saw it here first. And then you have this heavy uh, knob squad here, which cannot get a knob leader because they are all knob leaders. Look at them. They all have the power claw and are really, really mean and green. And one of very special units you can get in the campaign and that uh, replaces your uh, war truck is the looted rhino. It's uh, getting from the, it says from the blood ravens. Um, can get units inside, has some vehicles and still retains its smoke launchers. So you have now smoke launchers and you can still put in units inside. There's an honor guard um, war track so you can have both actually, loot the tank and a war track, a war truck. Um, the only one, there were, there's only one PVE only unit that I will not show here because it would be just another safe game uh, which I would jump into is one special reinforcement for survival a tier 4 reinforcement which is a looted fire prism or something like that like a looted uh, elf uh, uh, elf I'm saying elf uh, elder unit so really nice to have all these different looted shenanigans I really really like it but now really now we go to detect trees and here we are in the tech tree document. Um, I do not want to talk about every single unit or ability, but uh, some special 
<coughs> points of interest, for example, um, for example, the uh, timing of the different techs here, the different uh, possibilities to upgrade your your squads and units. Um, the pile of guns upgrades all the different stuff here, like uh, more Bernie, more Daka can you get immediately when building it. But uh, the most important upgrade in T1 is this armor upgrade here, which gives more health to all your orc units. Um, so do it as soon as you have two war banners and a um, pile of guns. This must be researched immediately. Even if you go for ranged fire, get this. Just get it. It's so good. Later on, if you add another banner, you more or less decide if you go melee or ranged. This is uh, more the blast here, what it's called. Increases the damage of heavy, not heavy, uh, big shooters. Big shooters from your shooter boys, big shooters from your war truck, big shooter from your war truck, and all the different other stuff that has big shooters. I think it's something like triples the damage, so it's ridiculous. So you want to have it if you go for big shooters. And one thing here, like the more choppy upgrade, gives more damage to melee for all your for all your um, boys but also gives your knob leaders a power claw. So very, very good. Um, if you go, for example, for storm boys, have two squads of storm boys with the knob leader, get more choppy, and then you can chop down enemy listing posts and power generators. And of course, units, really good. Like the three war banners is also very important to remember that you look at your boys hut because you can get the custom gadgets, which gives you the um, range damage resistance aura as well as the tank sub ability on your Big Mac. So really important upgrade that I on a regular basis forget because it's not in my <coughs> research building but on my barracks. So really, really important to get this. Um, most of these, except um, this is the uh, upgrade for your Storm Boys, all of these, uh, um, apart from the Storm Boys and the uh, uh, more plus here has a second tier <clears throat> in tier two you get access to the harder knobs which gives your squad leaders like the knob leaders i'm not sure about the whole knob squad but the, the, the knob leaders and your commander units more health and damage and whatnot so really really important and then you have for all these the second squad like even more bernie uh, even harder knobs um, heavy armor even more daka and even more choppy so it does the same thing as before but even more and most of them, all of them are in tier three. And there's one special thing here. This is the custom uh, thingy that gives all your commanders better weapons. Uh, for standard space manufacturers, you would have like the plasma pistol research or whatever. This is gives your <coughs> war boys, your Big Mac and all the, uh, probably also the uh, weird boy better weaponry. So this is a commander only upgrade in tier two. Um, this is that. We will quickly now talk also about the war gear, which is really late in the tier available. It's like tier three. Um, this is your more or less your standard more melee damage, more range damage. Uh, this gives you a speed boost, uh, some uh, various health upgrades. But this one, this banner is uh, really good because it increases your pop cap and vehicle cap, I think, as well. A pop cap by 15 i think even or it's like basically like a, you you carry your own wa war banner with your war boss then so you have more um cap so really nice to have it um one thing you see here as well that you need tier three for your listening post the second upgrade for listening posts so yeah really late uh, upgrade for it let's talk about the different tier strengths orcs start off really strong in uh, tier 1 slash tier 1.5 because these upgrades are really nice and the units you can get are also really nice you can get shooters for range combat you can get storm boys for uh, jumping melee combat and you have your really really awesome big mac so you can get really good in tier 1 the, storm, uh, the, the stick bombers are really nice if you can use them as well very micro intensive because of all the different stick bombs you need to throw um, in early tier two, they are also really strong because you can get immediately like the big old knobs. Where are they? Here, like the knobs and the tank busters. So they're really strong uh, units around that. And then you can field your first vehicles. The first vehicles or most of the vehicles are support vehicles. So the orcs in tier one, and I think all throughout tier two um, rely on their strong infantry. So make sure you get the upgrades for your infantry you will need it you will need infantry uh, this changes a bit you could say 
uh, I mean, these this with the uh, inclusion of these fly units that can get really uh, good damage as well, especially these death copters, for example. But you still think about the orc force, about their orcs and supporting vehicles. This changes a bit in uh, tier three. Tier three, you have access to all your cool leaders now and the flash kits and all your uh, various ranged orcs here. So you still have really, really good infantry, but you can now also get a fighter bomber, which is really nice. And is the, uh, this thing is also tier, tier three. Yes, it's even tier three is these a uh, gun wagon and the death threat, but the gun wagon, for example, is the most important thing. It gives you tier three artillery support. Again, support for your infantry. Um, that your vehicles are support changes more or less in tier four. As for most factions, you now can get really good tanks, which are still artillery here, but you have this um, uh, battle wagon, you have um, all your uh, super heavies and um, the Stomper and your Squigoth and as well as your Gorgonauts and whatnot. So you can get a really big, um, um, really good vehicle force here now as well. If you are able to somehow get this battle fortress here, you are on a really good way to winning the game because you can put in, as I said, your Gretchen's and whatnot and it will shoot in every direction you could think of. Your Titans as well can get really good later on as you would suggest. I think this is more or less it. Do I have some ranged, uh, some units or buildings forgotten here? No, not really. Uh, quickly looking over to the units, you can see um, all the different abilities here and that most knob leaders are available after you have two war banners and a, a pile of guns, which is the same timing as you get um, your armor upgrade. And one more you get at a big, uh, more choppy and whatnot. So this is uh, true for most leaders. Some require also a, um, this is because the stick bombers also require a boy's heart. Their leader also requires a boy's heart. And later on the uh, knob leaders for the tier two units also need tier two and the knob leaders for your tier three uh, units also need tier three. So it's more or less simple as that. Um, I included that all these uh, guys have this passive war, which they provide to the squads inside. This mob bonus, you could say. Mm, for vehicles, I've put all the units inside. You can also see a lot of units can get units inside to transport and unleash upon the battlefield. And last but not least, we will talk about the honor guard and bonus units. I have talked about all of them I think in this one snippet before in survival you get a squigoth as your titan uh, your relic reinforcement as I said this uh, fire prism or uh, elfish uh, elderish unit here is a tier 4 reinforcement for uh, survival as well more or less is the same as your looted tank but looks really cool if you ask me okay with all this talk about the tech trees we will now jump uh, to the second to last part to the build orders and there are quite a lot and here we are on the build order document as usual you find this build orders and tech trees also in my uh, google drive and also the links will be uh, available if you are looking in the donor for wiki um, there are a lot of org build orders i have for you are they all viable probably not i will say which are probably more Mimi, you could say. Um, one thing I want to talk about this standard opener. This is a standard opener, and this is not um, for some factions. I say the standard opener is probably not the most optimal. This opener has, or the the thing about this orc opener, the standard orc opener is that you are very very flexible. Um, that's something um, number called me, which is. Uh, the number one ladder player for unification about orcs is that they do not need to, um, how should I say, for some factions to do an opener and they, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, give me a second, I will find it. Like if, if you go this opener, you, you have, to, you, you go in this direction and you can't go in any other direction, let's say. 
if if this in this org opener you can adjust to almost everything that is uh, thrown at you let me go through it you get two <coughs> sluggers for capping one additional scratching for building you get a boy's heart a generator um, and get a shooter boy and then a big mech so you have a good fighting force early on and then later on as you add in a war banner and a uh, the pile of guns you can decide if i go for a second shooter boys build or do i add a um what is it called storm boy and then you can later add another storm boy or your first storm boy what but one storm boy you really want to have and as i said you want to get the armor upgrade earlier and then you can decide if i go more range heavy you want to have the blast here and the big shooters here or if i go choppy i get um, I would al always get if I get two storm boys. Don't forget to get the custom gadgets research here and um, I had all my build orders I have uh, posted here that you want to have three generators. You can get away with two generators especially if you do heavy fighting early on where you want to reinforce a lot of stuff then you probably do not need as much uh, power from generators because you're passively accumulating power while also uh, reinforcing your squad so you don't have how should i say a surplus of um requisition you want to use or however you want to put it two to three generators is normally enough to get then to tier two tier two as i said is uh four war burners then you can get knobs or whatever you want to do mech shop uh air tower and so on and so forth the other one here is in play style and opener i really enjoy it's um, not really uh, optimal in uh, many situations it's a shooter by spam you basically want to get uh, two more shooters after your initial one get all the upgrades for them like the blast here the tucker research as well <clears throat> the biggest problem with that is that you do not have any melee capabilities apart from your slugger so you are pinned in range combat so uh, you really need to micro um, your squads out of uh, position and whatnot um, with all the upgrades you're also delaying your tier 2 quite a bit so uh, probably not the optimal build order but really funny nevertheless more ducker more good basically mm. here's a squad like the th 3 slugger opener which I call here a melee focus because you want also want to add in a storm boy later on and give them their knob leaders and even add a stick bombers at some point Get all the melee upgrades and also the upgrade for the uh, jump troops for the storm boys if you can afford it if you need it this um, opener for example is very good against um, necrons for example necrons <coughs> in vanilla at least have a distinct uh, lack of melee units except for the flayed ones of course if they if you force them to build flayed ones then they do not use the resources in taking up or upgrading the existing unit so this is a win in itself for example and yeah you start off with a war banner so you can reinforce these guys a bit if you want and get, can get um yeah more um more units on the field early on so this is this opener to be aggressive early on as i said uh melee only you could say as well really good against uh ranged heavy factions to an extent so you want to force melee combat and the stick bombers can be really helpful <coughs> because for the stick bombs to make um retreating ranged units like fall over and you can then go into melee and give them a smack or two then you have the slugger spam the slugger bam looks really dumb if you look at it here you get like a lot of sluggers the thing you want to do is get five sluggers so you, um, uh, five slugger units models in each squad and the knob leader so you get the um the choppy upgrade here for the knob leader so he gets power claw as well as uh, the mob bonus for all the squads here and it can be really good if you have all these slugger boys in one area and then you get also the morale immunity um mob bonus and they go ham with all their power claws and whatnot <coughs> sorry that i'm little coffee here my my voice is uh, at its last leg and you see here that you do not need as much power because you have a lot of resources spent in these sluggers i, I post here that you also want to get ducker upgrade because you may or may not 
use some of these uh, slugger boys in range so this upgrade is a optional you could say this is the opener that i have let's say invented because of the new stick bombers that i really like you basically go stick bombers then into storm boys i will probably change this as a standard stick boys opener because you can also get uh shooter boys instead of um Storm boys. I will probably adjust it and you will have an adjusted uh, version of this in the drive. You basically want to start with a war banner, a second Gretchen which will build the boys heart and as, as soon as the banner is up you can get the pile of guns. This all works out that you then have enough resource of one stick boy, stick bomber squad so you can build it right away and then you get Daka upgrade because I recommend using these guys in ranged combat so you throw the stick bombs and shoot at any squad more stick bombs more stick bombs get the big mac later on for some melee support and also some teleporting support for your stick bombers really nice and then uh, i will adjust that you will go for either storm boys or shooter boys depending on the situation getting the according upgrades um yeah and also the standard three generators and uh, f four war banners come on then there is the tier two rush kind of thingy where you want to get four war banners really fast. Um, this is mostly used to get either war tracks or war tracks really fast or uh, the fighter bombers. Not fighter bomber, what are they called? The death copter squads. So normally you can just you could in theory just skip the generators and get four war banners but then you would have no power to get anything in tier 2 so you want to start with two generators to get uh, enough power uh, on the way to get your vehicle units out so that's the reasoning behind these two generators as usual tier 2 rushes highly highly risky can get punished very easily by an aggressive opponent now we enter the mean part of the build orders the first one is a settlement rush you see here what is the idea you get a generator so you have enough power to build another settlement but you also want to get infiltrated gretchens so you build with your first gretchen a generator and then rally it over to the enemy base get two sluggers to cap stuff and get gretchen infiltration so you then can get a settlement at an enemy listing post of your choice and infiltrated Gretchen's building it up. So especially against the faction that does not immediately have detection available, this can be really funny. Keep in mind though that this settlement does have only limited ranged range, so putting it uh, too far away from a listening post or a strategic point will not do anything. So it is really Mimi. You don't have anything on the field in the first uh, minutes apart from the settlement. The boys hut will then later be built next to the newly settlement and you will get all the buildings next to the settlement, um, even getting some stick bombers out later on, shooters I recommend. So this is a, a very wonky tier one all in build that is uh, quite fun against the AI. I haven't tried it against a player, however. And then another suboptimal build is uh, sluggers with burners. Can somewhat be useful, I guess, against demons or legion of damned. Um, the, the idea is that you get a more burny upgrade and then later on your Daka and uh, armor upgrade as well and you use the slugger, sluggers in ranged combat giving them the burners and the knob leaders and also a uh, Big Mac and some slugger boys because you want to have the um, pile of guns relatively early anyway then you can also get some stick bombers out so this is a fun way to play it but probably not optimal. So with all these openers uh, gone through, we will now jump into a replay I have played and I use this new stick bomber opening. So you will see how useful it can be or how not. We will see. And here are the replay where I fight against pigs, elder with the orcs on battle marches. Uh, just a quick word about pig. Uh, I fought against them finally i have casted the replay with pig against kukai where pig won using <laughs> quite the overpowered units um, from a player thanks i played this game another game 
against him. I would say he's kind of my strength level, which is fun because um, then you have interesting matches. So yeah, let's see. He he knows what he's doing. Um, does really good openers, really good aggressive play if he can do it. So really good um, fun. So you see the opener is the stick bomber opener. You start with a pop banner, a boy's heart and a pile of guns. Eventually you get uh, two sucker boys and then uh, build up your economy from there. As you uh, build a pile of guns, you will then um, get the first listening post started and um, will more or less magically have enough resources as soon as you have your pile of guns. Even if you start this listening post here, the other one will soon be finished and also your natural income will be enough that you get 120 requisition to get your stick bombers out. The stick bombers cost as much, requ as much requisition as a slugger boy. So if you have them available and want melee forces or general uh, squad, will you will uh, want to get stick bombers anyway. Then you see also I get the more darker research uh, as soon as I can. Not only increases it the range damage of all my squads, but also the range damage of all the buildings I have. So it's kind of a defensive upgrade as well. Other than that, I try to get my map and we see now there's uh, Dark Reapers coming in, which I normally would find rather frightening as orcs to deal with, but now I have stick bombers and they can throw stick bombers. This was a really nice throw, getting all squads at once. So there you have it, stick bombers really useful. And you see here that um, I will keep them in range, use my sluggers and melee, throw more and more stick bombs at them and force them to retreat, which is exactly what I want. So normally a uh, double dark reaper opener, which is um, a no gen opener for uh, Elder would want to punish you really early for you, for you, um, because it's very aggressive in the sense that it spends a lot of resources in immediately fighting forces. So uh, yeah, there you have it. Then he forces melee combat with the uh, um, with the Guardians, what they do not really want to do because they are also okay in melee. So there you have it, the Guardians will get slaughtered in melee. And then you, you need to <coughs> keep uh, be on the watch as, as much as you can, throw stick bombs. You need to, you want to throw them not when the squad is uh, uh, shuffled around because it will always focus the center of a squad. So if they are in, in cohesion like this, then you could throw a good stick bomb or two. But if they are, um, let's say, around and about, uh, chucked around, you do not want to have another stick bomb. So don't spam them, pick them uh, after one after another, you could say. I now added my generator and getting another war banner, so I can, I, I now start the Big Mac, um, as soon as I get uh, the generator up, that is. And then I also want, if, I, if, if I'm fast enough, if I'm, I have my mind uh, at the right place, which I haven't right now. Want to have immediately the upgrade for the uh, armor, you could say, for the orc armor. But I think I will use the resources elsewhere, which is sad. Uh, the armor upgrade could have been on the way already, so I'm really late on that part. This is one of the upgrades you want to have as soon as you possibly can, as I stated earlier. I rather added another generator, so really a uh, blunder on my part, the uh, armor upgrade could have been uh, done already, so this move would have been better, they would have more have more health. So you see, this is a big misplay on my part, but yeah, what is not a misplay is getting in with this Big Mac in melee to smack this listening post, getting in with my stick bombers as well, and seeing Howling Benjis. Howling Benjis, let's say, out of an oversight or position they now can use special attacks which is really nuts so they are really good in tier one now so be careful um, you see that i'm doing good damage with my big mac and also throwing some uh, stick bombs uh, stick bombs into the range squad and also the outing benches but uh, i'm losing a lot of models so i need to run away i probably i think yeah i attach my um my big mac and now uh, run away for now I will, I will be back. Did I get my armor upgrade? I did not. So really big, big misplay. 
these guys still don't have uh, as much health as they would want to have and now I'm adding shooter boys not uh, stone boys as you can see because I want to have something that shoots down this uh, rather fragile um, Benjis in T1 they they come uh, become real dangerous later on the line but for now they are rather fragile so I immediately get for big shooters and need to move them a little closer so they can make use of it. Um, I also use my slugger boys here I think or did I did lose my slugger? No they are still here to fight uh, alongside which you want to do at certain parts they cannot do a lot on their own but they can be really helpful uh, in a fight as well tying down tying up uh, range squads and whatnot <coughs> so he forced an attack lost quite some models holding benches down to one model but other than that the uh, map is uh, divided half half and half so which is okay ish I would say I think I am tech wise ahead finally getting the heavy armor heavy boy armor which is really really late I have one shooter boy squad do I add another one? I'm not sure. I'm not sure really if I should. I think. Uh, what do I go for? Another war banner to increase, uh, get up my tech level. And then I think at some point I decided that I want to have storm boys so I can get a really nice attack with teleported uh, stick bombers, some shooter boy range support, and then um, some storm boys as well. So this is my plan now. I have the Ducker upgrade, I have the Blasty upgrade, so my shooter boys are really good in range combat. Not sure if I get a more chubby upgrade later on. Little skirmish here against the Guardians. But as soon as I see <coughs> some actual forces, I move away to my more or less fortified position here with a war banner and a listening post. So I don't think this can be breached so easily, uh, at least not with Howling Banshees here. Um, you could probably stand the Dark Reapers here in the light cover and out of the range of uh, units but I used this uh, the time that he was on the one side to get in with my shooter boys and my stick bombers I am preparing my storm boys to attack I get in the custom gadgets as well so the storm boys are here to intercept whatever comes next here I also upgraded this uh, banner which you can get after 45 population cap to um, give me a bit of a safe haven on this side other than that I'm now tier 2 as well and got get a lot of generators what could a lot of generators in tier 2 mean tell me please have them here on, or had them on overwatch I think so they are a little too much 8 is a bit too much get, get this point from from pick so I have now more than half the map M tier 2 already Get, have custom gadgets now as well getting even a, um, a listening post here so let's see if I go in here what will await me I see Benchies, I see uh, Dark Reavers and I see also um, what I called Shadow Spectre so I know he is tier 2 as well and now there comes the uh, Storm Boys and will tie down tie up one Dark Reaper sword at least and other than that I have my stick bomber throwing the stick bombs left and right having my shooter boys which now still get tied down by uh, Benchies but Benchies I think died so I'm now a fully in ranged combat I use the storm boys in uh, melee the stick bombers and stuff in range and you see here the air towers going up on the other side so my intent is to go for death copters which can jump or not jump fly over the gap in the middle and then will deal good damage what was this explosion? Probably a, a Shadow Spectre. So I'm trying to focus on the Shadow Spectres because <coughs> they are anti-vehicle and I'm getting uh, aircraft units out so this is my idea. I'm also still throwing uh, grenades at Dark Reaper, throwing grenades at these um, Shadow Spectres but yeah by this point I have killed so much um, Elder units as well and of course I need to reinforce my units as well but um, yeah I they stick almost get the health and health regeneration bonus from the Big Mac because we are tier 2 now and there comes the Death Copters. The Death Copters have one problem in these Shadow Spectres so what do I have to do? I have to find my Storm Boys and need to tie them down. Throwing a stick bomb does help 
Where am I? Yeah, they were reinforcing on the backside. You see, they explode in big manner and cost you a lot of resources. But now the storm boys, I right click them in the shadow specters and the death copters clean the house here. So this is more or less GG. But you can see uh, me using a few more units. I didn't got blast here. Now I have blast here. Jesus, a little late on blast here here. So yeah, the, the harlequin will get uh, smacked to death here. Oh, he's still alive, but he will die eventually. And now my second death copter squad, so I can park them over the armory. Uh, the aspect portal have the storm boys um, following the shadow specters, so they cannot shoot. Yeah, uh, so I tried here to show the stick bombers and the death copters in use. I hope you enjoyed this and the guide in general. Um, as usual, if I have forgotten something, if I you have additional information in general if you want to correct something that I told you uh, wrongly you could say which I uh, give some false information please correct me in the comments um, yeah and other than that I would say as usual thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video bye bye